That's correct. Remember those motherfuckers. All right, guys. It's Dusty in here. I live 20 miles outside of town. And what I would like to say is, Shalom, Aha, Wabaraka. Peace, love, and blessings. First and foremost, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rawah Hadash. All right, I got a class for today. Welcome to another I Am Still Not Allowed to Go Live lesson. I'm barely allowed to go on YouTube. It's hot in here today. Like I said, I live in the middle of the desert. So when I say it's hot in here today, it's 90 degrees outside. And it ain't gonna cool down anytime soon. We have a little farm out there. Just fruits and vegetables. Can't afford any livestock. A bale of hay is, what, 20, $22 when they were $8 last year. Making it impossible. But um, we've always had chickens, at least. Oh, praise to you, how about it, you know what I'm So, um, today's class is called The Righteous and the Meek Shall Be Hidden in the Day of Yahweh's Anger. So, let's just get right into it. Now I'm gonna jump around a little bit and then I'm gonna bring it together. So let's go ahead and um, let me just get my notes. I take notes, that's all there is to it. I got so many things I wanna say, I have to write notes. I'm not just gonna remember all this. So anyway, first things first, we're gonna go right into it. Psalm 85 and 11. The truth, I'm sorry, Psalm 85 and 11. The truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. So right away, truth shall, shall spring out of the earth. That's us prophets, the apostles, the elders, the disciples that are going to be apostles and prophets soon. That's what that's talking about. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. And what happens when he begins to look at us again? Let's go to Matthew 24 and 7. For what happens when righteousness, let's say it again, righteousness shall look down from heaven. What is going to happen? It's a simple question. And it's a, I don't want to hear an answer from scripture. I don't want to hear your thoughts. I don't care about thoughts. I don't got no thoughts. The most high didn't give me thoughts. He gave me precept upon precept. So let me show you what's going to happen when he begins to look at us. And when righteousness, righteousness, Looks down from heaven. Hold on. I didn't write it down. I have the definition in the phone that I'm recording on. So let's just go look it up. Let's see what the dictionary says righteousness is. Is it going to have the same definition as the um, scripture? This is an old dictionary, like I said. Right 
right-minded, rightness. Let's come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, show it to us. I guess it's going to be under rightness. The agreement with truth shall look down from heaven. Okay, let's see what happens when he that agreed with truth and did everything right and then was sacrificed for us. Let's see what happens when, he's, when he starts looking down again. Let's see. Let's go to um, Matthew 24 and 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. These, all these are the beginnings, are the beginning of sorrows. Okay. And you know what? Let's read the next verse. And then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, Nathaniel. So, the agreement with truth shall spring out of Israel. I'm sorry, the agreement with righteousness shall look down from heaven. I apologize. Let me take that back. It says, truth shall spring out of the earth. That's us, the prophets. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. That is our, uh, the, the um, how would you say it? Yahweh Shai, the Shalom Allah, who is in agreement with his father, who did everything correctly. And when he starts looking down again, what's he going to do? What is he going to do? For a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. These shall be the beginnings of sorrows. Why do I keep saying the same thing? Because you guys need to get it into your heads that this ain't going to not happen. This is going to happen. It's starting to happen. If you don't wake up, you're going to get left behind. Let me keep going because we haven't even gotten into the class yet. Jeremiah 32. We're not even close to the class. I need to say all this first. Jeremiah 32. Chad, starting at verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. There's nothing too hard for our Father. He created this. He's in control. He's doing all this. He's playing it out. He told us in the prophecies that it was going to happen this way. He showed our forefathers, and they explained it to us the best they could. Man, I'm as hot as I'm on my body right now. I'm just sweating like I stole something. He's doing this. And he has control of everything. But this class today is called The Righteous and Meek Shall Be Hidden in the day of your housing. So let's go into that. Let's go to the book of Zephaniah. Well, I just had to show you a few things first. So we're so you know that we're coming into that day right now. 
we're coming into the day of his anger. So let's go to the book of Zephaniah. And we're going to go to chapter 3. And we're just, you know what, let's start at, we're going to go to Zephaniah chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. They hate us. Where's our seat at the United Nations? We're not a part of NATO. We're not a part of NATO. That, that stuff's against us. When you go to the Ukraine, what are they saying in uh, um, um, Poland? If you are a black person, you are instantly an illegal immigrant that is a Muslim. So all you so-called black people, you're an illegal immigrant that is instantly classified as a Muslim. Let me read it again. Let me start over again. Gather yourselves together. Get your shit together. Get your mind together. Gather together with the like-minded people around you and be safe. It's not just saying one thing. It's saying get all of it together. Not one port. Let me get a little one portion of it together. It doesn't make sense. What makes sense is to gather yourself together, O nation not desired. Um, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass, as the chaff, before the fierce anger of Yahweh, Baha'i Shem, Yahweh Shai, come upon you. Yeah, it's Yahweh's anger, but he's sending Yahweh Shai. When the earth was built, he didn't come off of his throne. He sent his son before the day of Yahweh's anger come upon you. Verse 3. Seek ye Yahweh, all ye meek of the earth which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, agreement with the scriptures, agreement with Yahweh. Let's just call it that. You're in agreement with Torah. Righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. You hear that? So there are some people. Now there's two prophecies going at the same time. There's those that are going to die. And then there's those that are going to be hidden. When I showed you that. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. But seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of Yahweh's anger. Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shah. How are you going to be hid in this day? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And you know what sucks? I have all these definitions written down in the phone that I'm recording on. So I'm going to show you guys some stuff. Because to be meek, I, I want to see the definition. It literally means to win. This is what it means to be meek. It has nothing to do with being soft or soft-spoken or quiet. When being meek means when Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai tells you to do something, you jump off your lazy ass and do it, no questions asked. Now, here's an example of what people do in this day and age when they're told to do something. Hey, I need you to do this for me. Oh, I can do it for you, but I gotta leave by a certain time. No, you stay until the job is done. So let's see what this says. Because I have the biblical definition which pisses me off because I didn't write it down. Meek.
Listen to this. Listen to this. No, hold on. Where I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys something. This this is bullshit. This is bullshit right here. I'm about to show you. All right, guys. Yeah, I want to show you guys this right now. I want to show you guys how this shit's bullshit. This got me pissed off on a, a whole different level instantly. I'm going to show you what they're saying meek means. Spineless. Spiritless. Moses was meek. He was meek among all men. He was spineless and spiritless among all men. Is that what that's saying? Hold on. Too submissive. T-O-O -O, submissive. This is some bullshit. This is a lie. But luckily I study all the time and I know that is the first time this dictionary has let me down. Let me show you, and I'll show you, I got the concordance right here, neuro exhaustive. I've got the 1611 right here. I've got the authorized King James version right here. That's not the 1611, but it still has the apocrypha. And I've got a three King James in front of me that'll break that fucking scripture down correctly. I mean that, that word, the word meekness. What does it mean? An attitude or quality of heart whereby a person is willing to accept and submit without resistance to the will and desire of someone else. In other words, to be meek is to do what the Most High says and not lessen other people. Nothing to do with being soft. How, a, how did Moses go in and smite an Egyptian, but he was spineless and he was too spiritless. Does that make even any type of sense? No. He was doing the most highest work. So, let's keep going. Let's jump over to. Um, the book of Amos. This class might go a little bit slower than I thought. Amos 5 and 14. Seek Yahweh. I'm sorry, seek good, not evil, that ye may live. So and so the Lord, Yahweh, the Lord, I'm sorry. So Yahweh, the God of hosts. For the Shabbat shall be with you as he has spoken. So wait a second. It said to seek good, not evil, that ye may live. What is good? It's going to get redundant. I'm going to tell you guys right now. What is it to be good? To be good is to go back to the Levitical law, statutes, and the direct commands given to you throughout this book. And people don't want to acknowledge that because once they do, they have to change their lifestyle. They can't go around eating pork, eating fried shrimp. They can't go around celebrating Christmas and Easter. Acting like, oh, well, it's, you know, it's not, it's the, it's, it's for the kids. That, that, that sounds more wicked than anything. But that's what people say, and that's what they said about me, and that's what my mom told me. It's for the kids. When I first thought, oh, we just do it for the kids. Why? To fuck them up? Think about it. Did you say F this, F that? F, F, F? Oh, yeah? Second Corinthians. Just for all you mother... I'm going to tell you right now. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Well, sorry, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, 2 Corinthians. I may be rude in speech. What chapter and verse? It was in 2 Corinthians. Oh, 11 and 6. Sorry about that. 
I should have just read up a little bit. I, I got so worked up right now because I do say a lot when these scriptures come out. So let me show you what. Second Corinthians 11 and 6. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. We, the prophets, the apostles, the elders, the disciples, not in that order, we have shown you everything. And we have been doing it for a very long time. Now I'm trying to show you that there's two prophecies walking hand in hand with each other. One saying that some of you couldn't be hidden in the day of the Lord. And the other one is saying, you're going to have to die. Whether you go into the kingdom as one of the top disciples or whether you die uh, 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 a horrifying, horrific death as a two-thirds. So there's, there, there's some prophecies walking together right now. I'm telling you guys about one of them. This is the one where you're protected. Because I've heard all the other ones. Let's get into some protection, right? Let's find out. Is he really going to help us? Well, let's see what he did with Noah. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Let's see, let's see if he protected Noah. Genesis chapter 7. And we're going to start at verse 15. And the flood, wait, 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 verse 15. And and they went into, I'm sorry, they went in unto Noah, into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And all the unclean animals were two and two. The clean animals were seven and seven, which is the number of completion. I'm not getting into that, but I want to make that very clarified. So, I said, well, you said there was just two and two animals. No, uh-uh, I didn't. I said there was two and two that went into the ark according to this verse. But we can precept and we can go and show you that there were seven of each clean animal and two and two of each unclean animal. This is just being slightly vague to get to what's going to happen next. So you just got to pay attention and understand that I'm not leaving anything out. I'm showing you guys everything. Pay attention. Verse 15. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And let me keep going. Let me keep going. Um... Um, um, um. Let me just keep going. I just want to make sure I'm in the right spot and doing everything like I said. Let's see if he protected Noah. Let's see if Noah was hidden. And they went in. This is verse 16. So this is Genesis chapter 7 and verse 16. So we know that the male and female went in. I just had to throw in there that it was 7 and 7 of the clean animals. We just, I'm not leaving nothing out. That's why. I don't care what anybody says. But verse 17. And the flood, I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 17. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth and the waters increased. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I missed, I'm sorry. Salakia, verse 16. I'm getting so excited, I'm going off. Verse 15, they went in unto Noah, into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. Verse 16. And they that went in, went male and female of all flesh as Yahweh had commanded Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai had commanded him, and the Lord Yahweh 
Wait, who? What? And Yahweh shut him in. Noah didn't close the door on the ark. The Most High shut him in, and it's for a reason, because he sealed the door to make sure he was safe. Isaiah. Let's get a precept. Isaiah, 20, chapter 26. And we're going to start at verse 20. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation over Pass. For behold, Yahweh cometh out of his place, Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. He sends his son to do all this work. You guys gotta understand this. You gotta understand this. Yahweh sends Yahweh Shai. That's why I keep saying Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, the name of Yahweh Shai. He's the one doing all this. His father's telling him what to do, and he's coming and doing it. You better study, because you might find yourself lost. So let me go again at um, Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, Yahweh cometh out of his place, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her bud and shall no more cover her slain. So, my people, I'm going to hide you. The ones that are in this truth, truth, let me go back to the very first verse, Psalms 85 and 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. So, when you know that righteousness is looking down from heaven, let me read 21 again. For behold, the Lord, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, cometh out of the place to punish. What is righteousness? Looking down from heaven. Righteousness shall look down from heaven. What is he going to do? For behold, the Lord cometh out of this place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. For their iniquity, the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So you, so you gotta, you gotta understand. He's doing this right now. That's why I'm bringing out this class. It's another very important class. Some of you are actually going to be hidden in the day of the Lord. But if you think that you can just live a worldly life and the Most High knows your spirit and knows your heart. You're saying he knows your spirit and he knows what you're thinking on a day-to-day -day basis and you're fucking wicked if you think that you can get into the kingdom without doing the works. you got to be joking. I'm trying to save the people that are going to be hidden. You can't be out celebrating Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving and saying and then the Halloween and be like, oh, it's for the kids. So, you know, it's all good. You're not going to be hidden in the day of the Lord. You're not, that's, this, this, you might as well just turn the video off. This class ain't for you. This class is for the people that actually do his works. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Let's go to Matthew. Because I'm going to prove that, um, something about, <laughs> this is really cool too. Watch this. Let me read it again. Because we're going to take a whole new direction. Isaiah 26, 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation overpass thee. Now, 
the reason why I want to show you what we're saying. So, wait a second. So he told us to go into our chambers, to hide ourselves. And you know what? In the book of Matthew, it's very interesting because I'll show you exactly what he's telling us to do. I'm going to show you exactly. Go to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking, or Jesus, for all you guys that don't know who Yahweh Shai is. He ain't that white dude. Be a black man. He got an afro like mine. Probably better than this. This is probably, he, if he had an afro like mine, I, I, I doubt that. I doubt that. I doubt that. <laughs> it's probably a lot nicer than mine. But that's not what this is about. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. And we're talking about when you go into your chambers and close your door to get overpassed. So go to verse 6, Matthew 6 and 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, prayest to thy father, which is in secret, hidden. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward openly. The open reward at this time, guys, it's not a badass car and some nice rims. I'm sorry, that is not a reward. That is worldliness. The open reward that we are trying to receive is salvation. We want to be hidden in the day of Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, when he brings his anger, which is already started. We want to be hidden. We want to have salvation. We want to know that when he comes, that we're one of the one third. And some of the uh, people that bring out this word are going to be considered part of the 144,000. A lot of people are hoping for that, that bring out this word. You want to be part of the, the, the hopefully elect in the kingdom of rulers. That's what bringing out this word does. And if you're bringing out this word now, every life that he sent you back, going all the way back, you've been bringing out this word. That's all there is to it. But now that we, um, we know that when we're in our chambers, to be hidden is to be hidden away. Praying, and what are you praying for? That he will hide you in his anger. It's that simple. Let me keep going. Jeremiah. Go to the book of uh, Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah, um, chapter twenty nine. Starting at verse 12. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. What did I just tell you in Matthew 6 and 6? When thou prayest, enter in thy closet. What did I tell you in Isaiah 26? And um, it all lines up. Watch. Isaiah 20. Look. It was Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers. When thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Jeremiah 29 and 12. Then the word, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 29 and 12. Then shall ye call upon me. So when you go and hide, and I showed you when you're praying, you're going into hiding. When you're being hid, now that we know that we're hidden, we we're in there, then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. You're doing everything you're supposed to, 
you're praying for the right things, he's going to listen. Let's go to Psalm 57. And 57 and 1. Be merciful unto me, O Yahweh. Be merciful unto me. Now we're praying. Now we're, now we're saying the prayer. This is the prayer. For my soul trusteth in thee. Let me start over. What are we praying when we go hide ourselves in our chambers and we close our doors and we're in our closet and the doors are shut and we prayest? What are we praying for? Let's see. Be mer This is Psalm 57 1. Be merciful unto me, O Yahweh. Be merciful unto me. Show mercy. For my soul trusteth in thee. I have faith. Yea, in the shadow of the wings will I make my refuge. So we're going to be hidden in his wings. Unto these calamities be overpassed. So in the shadow of his wings. So um, there are some that are bringing out this word, like I said earlier, that are the 144,000 within the one third. And these people are gonna be brought right up into the wing. That's the chariot. Let me keep going, because I don't wanna to get too deep into that. It's a whole nother class that I have to bring out. Let's go to Job 22. And that'll be a good class too. Too far, guys. Let's go to the book of Job, chapter 22. And let's go to verse 25. Because when you're in the wing and you're being hidden, Job. 22 and 25. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. But we're not really getting into that part. We're getting into the part that he's going to defend us. He's going to protect us. He's going to bring us into the shadow of his wing. He is going to have us closed into our chambers, closed into our closet. And when our doors are shut and we're heading away, what are we doing? We're praying that he is merciful to us, right? Right? It all works together. And when we pray that he's merciful to us, let's go back to Job 22 and 25 again. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. He's going to defend us. These are the people that have faith. This is the real patient in the faith of the saints. We are patiently and faithfully waiting for our oppressor to be destroyed. But honestly, it's not really just, oh, we want this, this one thing to happen. No, what we want are the prophecies to be fulfilled. We are patiently and faithfully waiting for all the prophecies to be fulfilled. So when you look at us, we said it before it happened. To say before. And when it does happen, when you mock us the whole way through, you're going to find out that you are amongst a real prophet. Let's keep going, though. Let's go to uh, the book of Psalms. Let's stay in the book of Psalms. And let's go to chapter um, 22. And we're going to go to Psalm chapter 22. And 26. We prayed. We did everything we were supposed to. Now, listen to this carefully. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. 
they shall praise Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. What is your heart? Your mind. You shall stay. There is no death for us when we keep these laws. In um, sincerity. Not, oh, I can go through the motions. I tie my shoes every day. I get up every day and do the motions. No, this is in sincerity. So if some of you can't figure out why it don't work for you, because he don't fucking want you. You're going through the motions and you're following false prophets for the most part. And you know when someone's a false prophet, they tell you to fucking send them money. So, let me say it again. Psalm 22 and 26. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. Okay, great. That is phenomenal. Who can be hidden, though? Who's going to be hidden in this day? Whose heart's going to live forever? How are we going to get this? Let me show you to the meek and the righteous. Let me show you. Everybody else can just kind of just go your own way and justify whatever it is that you have to justify and say all the weird shit that you're going to say. But I'm only talking about the meek and the righteous. The real people that have faith in true sincerity. So everybody else, please, I don't care if I don't get zero, if I get zero views, I get about two to 11 views. I don't care. The one view I care about is Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh When he sees me doing my works in righteous and sincerity, not for any other reason other than I was told to do these works and the spirit was put on me. Let's go to the book of Psalms because let's see who can be hidden. Let's go to Psalms chapter 105. We're just going to start at verse 4. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Seek his face evermore. You're looking for his face? Well, guess what? He's trying to see his face in you. For gold is refined in the fire. And when gold is completely refined, you will be able to see the reflection of your face in it. So in other words, when the Most High sees you living your life in, in, in the same manner that he put you here for, in the same manner as his son, then you've been refined. So when it says, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face, he wants you to try and look like him. You're looking for the, the most high, right? How are you going to get there? There's a narrow path you can follow. Let's keep going. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done. His wonders and his judgments of his mouth. That is the Levitical law. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. The reason why I'm reading, let me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to the thousand generations, to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirm the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. <laughs> Saying unto thee, I will give the land of Canaan and the lot of your inheritance. But really, how, my question was, my question was, who can be hidden? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. O oh, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. That's verse 6. 
the covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. That's 9 and 10. So, how can you be hidden? Well, first of all, you got to be from the royal bloodline. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So, um, Amos. Let's see what else. There's got to be more to it than just being a part of Israel. You can't just be an Israelite and just be in, right? That's just too easy. Amos chapter 5 and verse 4. Let's see what it says. For thus saith Yahweh unto the house of Yasharal is the real name, not Israel. It's Yasharala. But anyway... For thus saith Yahweh unto the house of Yasharala, his name is every. Seek ye me, and ye shall live. Seek ye me, and ye shall live. That simple. How do you seek the most high? I mean, we've been talking about it for, I don't even know how long now. Ever since this class started to be hidden, you have to come back to the laws, the statutes within the laws, and the direct commandments they gave us. To the best of your ability, according to your knowledge and the new stuff you learn, you must apply to your life. You can't just decide, no, I'm not going to do that and still be hidden. You're not going to be hidden. You're going to be exposed. Let's go to Exodus. Let's see, um, let's get another example of the Most High showing mercy and hiding us and passing over us or overpassing us, right? We're in Exodus, you already know what's gonna happen. Let's go to verse chapter 12, verse seven, and, and they shall take the take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the house wherein they shall eat it. Let's jump up to verse 13 and get a little clarity. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Go into thy chambers, close thy doors. When thy doors are shut, you're praying, you're doing what you're supposed to, and this specific incident, this is physical. Physically put these blood, this blood on your doors. Physically, physically, and I will physically pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt, which means burnt faces or bondage. We live in this land right now. We need to put the spiritual blood on our doors and get our families in order. Get your family in order. Get your mind right. If you're one of the one third, wake the fuck up. What are you doing? We have like 10 seconds left and everybody's acting like we got years to go. Well, great. If there are years, you still lose because you never were, you were never hidden. You've always been exposed and the most high is showing your wickedness to the world. So, how can we be overpassed in the day of the Lord? How can we be passed over like how the children of Israel were in Exodus? How about when Noah got on the, the ark and, the, and, and it literally said, and Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai sealed the door. How do we get him to seal the door and protect us? Let's find out. Let's go to the book of, um, I think it's in Chronicles. Second Chronicles. I think it's in second, and, and I just take a lot of notes, guys. I'm sorry. I really do. Second Chronicles, sometimes I, I mess up, so second Chronicles.
but I didn't mess up this time. This is how you will be passed over. This is how you're hidden in the day of Yahweh. This, this is exactly how you do it. And this is what every prophet, every street preacher, every disciple, every elder, every apostle, every friend that you have that's barely coming into the truth is telling you this is how you're going to be hidden. This is how he's going to overpass you. Um, 2 Chronicles 34 and verse 27. 2 Chronicles chapter 34 and verse 27. Because thy heart was tender and thou didst humble thyself before Yahweh when thou didst his works, words, I'm sorry. Sorry, let me start over. I got so excited. That if, let's, let's just go back to the beginning. 2 Chronicles 34 and 27. Because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before Yahweh, when thou heardest his word against this place. Where are we? And against the inhabitants thereof. Who has oppression over us? Come on, guys. Stop fucking around. Stop playing semantics. If you don't want the truth, then turn my shit all the way off. Because I'm only bringing out truth. And I don't care what anybody says. I don't. Humble thyself. Okay, so let me so let me just go back again. Because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before Yahweh, when thou heardest the words against this place and against the heavens thereof, and humbled thyself before me, and didst ha, uh, uh, didst rend thy clothes and weep before me, I have even heard thee also, saith the Lord. You heard my words and did them, and now you're praying to me, I hear your words. Matthew 6 and 6, when thou art hidden away in your closet and the door is closed, pray to the Most High. Right? He's telling you, you changed? You're listening to my words? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to listen to your words. Verse, I want to make sure I still keep going. Oh. Um, yeah, let me keep going. Behold, I will gather thee and thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king. Listen to this. They brought the king word again. Now listen carefully. Now this is a, this this gets into a whole different. This is um. This is Joe. This is Josiah's covenant, but I'm I'm like I'm I'm going in on Josiah, which so the you the whole you got to understand that this stuff it 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 keeps happening. It's perpetual. So let's go to verse twenty nine, and then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. Verse thirty, and the king went up into the house of Yahweh and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites and all the people great and small and he read in their ears the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord so how are we how are <laughs> How can we be passed over? One more verse. Verse 31, and the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after Yahweh, Baha'i Shem, Yahweh Shai. How can we be passed over? To <laughs> walk after Yahweh and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all your heart. That's how you do it. With all his heart and with all your soul, with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book. 
How are you going to get passed over? By doing what the book says. That's it. There is no other way. Justify yourself into the grave. You're in death if you're in worldliness. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's keep moving around. Let's keep going. I'm going. I don't care. I'm going to keep going until I run out of scriptures. Isaiah chapter 55 and 6 and 7. So I showed you what to do. I showed you how to do it. Now, for all you lazy, uh, um, all you lazy niggas that are slow bellies, which means fat and lazy. All you slow belly people, seek ye the Lord while ye, this is Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Lord, seek ye Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Hello, now's the time. There's no more time left. You have to do this now. This is a now thing. If you don't understand that, then it's not for you. And if you're already doing it, all oh, praises to Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shad, Baha Hashem, Rabah Chadash. Okay? Verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And our God... For he will abundantly pardon. Let's read that again. Let the wicked forsake his way. What did I just tell you? Call upon the Lord while he may be found. Let the wicked forsake his way. What did I tell you in um, 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 Psalms? Was it, what is it? Second it? Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Remember what they said? It, it literally said uh, in Second Chronicles 34 that... And um, 27, watch this, watch what it says. Because thine heart was tender and didst humble thyself before God, when thou heardest his words against this place and against the inhibitors. So they were being wicked. Now, they were being wicked. Isaiah 6 and 7. Seek you, Lord, while he may be found. They humbled themselves. They saw what it said, and they immediately humbled themselves to the Lord, and he showed mercy on them. So let's see what this says. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let the wicked stop doing wickedness, and let the unrighteous stop being an unrighteous person. Stop being against the Most High. That's a unrighteousness is literally Antichrist. And let him return unto Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shah. And he will have mercy upon him. So you let go of all the bullshit and you return unto Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. He's going to have mercy upon him. And to our God. For he will, to, to Yahweh, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, what will he do? He will, he will abundantly pardon. And I, I actually have those scriptures, damn it. Let's, let's get it. Let's get it. What is the biblical definition of abundantly? The word abundant in the New Testament, exceedingly, very highly, beyond measure, more, a quantity so abundant as to be considerably more than what one would expect or anticipate. So let's use that one. So the most high for he will, he will, um, considerably, he will, he will be considerably more than what one would expect or anticipate, and then he will pardon. So what does it mean to be pardoned? What is the biblical definition of pardon?
Sorry. I... It's giving me a hard time because we're going in and it knows that. So, the biblical definition. So he will abundantly, he will abundantly, so he will, um, this is, this is what pardon means. To be forgiven for one's sins and transgressions against God's will. So he's going to abundantly And abundant, remember, um, considerably more than one one would expect or anticipate. But he's going to forgive you more than you ever expect. So it's it's really important that you understand what these words are actually saying to you. So he will abundantly pardon. He's going to do it more than you ever expected and show mercy on you. All you have to do is humble yourself. And come back to him. That's how you're going to get passed over. That's how you're going to be hidden. Let's go to the book of... Uh, let's stay in Isaiah. Let's jump to 59. Isaiah 59. And we're going to start at verse 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. And unto them that turned from transgression in Jacob. Saith Yahweh Bahashim Yahshua. The Redeemer is Yahweh. So he's coming. And everybody that did exactly what I just told you, you 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 humbled yourself, you went back to the law, statutes, and commandments, you got. And this is how he's gonna abundantly pardon you. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith Yahweh. My spirit is my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh for henceforth and forever. So, what I'm telling you right now, I told you that it's already been for a thousand generations we've been saying this, for a thousand generations, we've been telling him. And it's never going to change. His word does not change. Oh, now we're going to get that too. His word does not change. Where does where it say his word changes? I know where it says it doesn't change. In fact, I let, let me read it for you. Revelation 22 and uh, start at 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things... God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So let's go back to Isaiah 59 and um, 21 again. And let's read that again. As for me, my covenant is with them, saith Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh My spirit is upon thee. My words, my words, which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth. I'm not changing the words of this book. I've been sent back just like my brothers, my Akiyam Barakatham. I see you out there putting out videos. And we're all doing the same thing, and you're the only ones I'll roll with because you're the only ones bringing out that real truth. But let's say, let's let's keep going. And my words, which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of the seed seed, saith the Lord. So, 
It's always, it, no matter what, my children are going to say the same thing. Every time I'm sent back, I'm going to say the same thing. We're going to keep saying the same thing and tell you how about Hashem, how a shy comes and destroys this place, but hides us off to the side. He's going to preserve us. I'm not, not saying I'm getting preserved because there's some that I said. There's other prophecies all walking hand in hand right now that haven't been fulfilled, that are going to be fulfilled. And we're about to find out who's hidden and who's not. Let's go to the book of Jonah. Let's go to the book of Jonah. Why not, right? Let's just keep going. I had told you I ain't stopping until I run out of scriptures today. I live about, I live far, let's just say that. I live out in the middle of nowhere. So it's really hard for me to get to the highways and the hedges. But I do when I can, I'll tell you that. We'll probably be out there tomorrow. Most high one will be out there tomorrow on Sunday bringing out the word together. Me and uh, uh, the uh, Akiyam Tazma uh, Royal Priesthood 144 is the other channel. I've never mentioned that. Um, I need to. I did right now. Royal Priesthood 144 is the sister channel to um, K6J1B3. All right, so let's go to Jonah chapter 3 and starting at verse 9. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not. Who can tell? And Yahweh saw their works that they turned from their evil ways. How do you show him that you're ready to be saved? He saw your works. Faith without works is death. And they told that. So justify yourself into sitting around doing nothing. You're going down. So let me start over. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repent of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. So for all you people that received this message today. I'm showing you how to truly be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. We're going to just keep going. I told you I'm going to keep going until I run out of scriptures. I might run out of music before I run out of scriptures, but I'm going to keep going. Jeremiah chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse from the top. If thou wilt return, O Israel, Yasharala, saith Yahweh Baha Shem Yahushai, return unto me. If and if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then <laughs> shalt thou not remove. You hear that? Let me keep going. And thou shalt swear that Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai loveth in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness. And the nations shall bless themselves in him and in him shall they glory. All we have to do as Israelites is return to the Most High. The other nations, it says, this is a paraphrase, but when evil is in rulership, the nations, um, they, they weep. And when um, righteousness is in rulership, everybody is, um, they glorify it. I forget how it, I forget, I, you know, I'm, I'm really, let me, Hold on, no. Uh -uh. Watch. Because the nation saw, well, I'll show you right now. When evil is in rulerships, the nations weep. What chapter and verse? So, uh, I, um, that's a paraphrase. Let me just stick with it. So, Jeremiah, like I said, uh, chapter, we were in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. And that, if thou wilt return, O Israel, seeth Yahweh return unto me, 
And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then thou shalt, then thou shalt not remove. So he will keep you. He will protect you. He, I don't care what anybody says. These scriptures are what are saying. He will protect you if you do what he says. It's saying it all through the Bible. Okay, let's go ahead and get a couple more and then I'm going to let it go. I'm finally getting to the end here. I'm running out of scriptures. So let's go ahead and go to um, St. John chapter 9. And we're going to go to verse 31. Let's go back to... Um, Jeremiah. Let's go back to Jeremiah um, 4 and 1 and 2 again, just really quick. Jeremiah chapter 4 and 1. If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. And thou will put away thine abominations from out of my sight. Then thou shalt not remove. I want you to remember one thing. Now we're going to jump over to John 9 and 31. Now we know that Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and doeth his will, him he heareth. So, like I told you earlier, you listen to my words. How do I know? Because you did the works. So I will listen to you. God don't hear sinners. So if you say, oh, God knows my heart. He knows my mind. You ain't hidden. You're exposed. And you will not be protected. To be protected means that you are not a sinner, that you're doing these works. And I showed you already. If you didn't hear it, go back and listen Again, let's go to Colossians. Chapter 3. And we're going to... Um, the verse start, we're, we're still talking about getting passed over. We're still talking about being hidden. We're still talking about the day of the Lord's anger. So let's let's go ahead and read this. This is Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. What it's talking about being dead is when we're in the world, we're in death. And it says it all through the scriptures. That's a whole nother class. But when you are doing what the scriptures say, and it's um, sincerely, like it's in your heart, it's sealed in your brain. You, you can't get away from it. You can't stop doing it. That's who he's talking to right now. That's it. But your life is hid. You're hidden right now. The true children of Israel that humbled themselves and came back to the law, statutes, and commandments, they will be hidden. And it says it. Your life is hid with Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai, who is our life, shall appear, then ye also appear with him in glory. And you know what? In the last 50 years, he has been showing himself, and we have been waking up with him. That's a whole different story. But I'm going to read right through this. When, when Yahweh Shai, who is our life, shall appear then, ye shall appear with him in glory. Five, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, and ordinate affection, evil. Cons, um, con, 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 I don't even know how to say it. And covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things say the wrath of Yahweh cometh on the children of disobedience. So let's read that again. For which things say cometh 
which things sake the wrath of Yahweh cometh on the children of disobedience. So if you're caught in fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil con, um, con, cupulence, I don't even know how to say that, and covetousness and idolatry, you're the children of disobedience. You are not hidden. You will be exposed for there is nothing hidden that, um, I forget how that one goes too. You will be exposed. And for there's nothing hidden that shouldn't, that won't be seen. I forget how it goes. Uh, but it tells you that all your, all, all the stuff that you think you're doing in secret, most high guys are 2,000 times brighter than the sun. You will be exposed. He can see you. In which he also walked some time when he lived in them. So... When you were a child of disobedience, you walked in the ways of the world, we'll say, with the fornication and evil and all that, not keeping the laws. You lived in those lives. I lived that. Everybody lived that way until they woke up. There's very few people that were born in the truth. And if you were born in the truth, you couldn't be more than nine or 10 years old. I don't know very many people that were raised in this truth. But I could be wrong. There, there's got to be some of you out there. So don't get me. Don't 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 let me be the one to say who's who. Let me keep going. Verse eight. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man, which with his deeds, and have put on the new man which is rewarded in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So, this is a good way to find out whether you're being hidden or not. You're being rewarded in knowledge. Now, some of us are going to go out there, and I mean, there are some prophets that are very circumspect and then there's other prophets that will go out and beat you upside the head with the 12 tribes chart. I ain't mad at either of them. I love them both. In fact, I think they're both doing exactly what the Most High wants them to do. And some people need to get beat upside their head with the 12 tribes chart, honestly. So, <clears throat> I've seen prophets go out there and crack a gay person in the head with a stick. And I've seen prophets go out there and not put hands on anybody and get pushed down so it just depends on um, the spirit that the Most High puts on you. It doesn't mean that you're weak or you're strong because you did something. It might mean you're smart or you're stupid. <laughs> okay, let's go to Psalm 91. Let's go to Psalm 91. We're getting down to the end. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close out with um, Psalm 91. I'm going to close out. I'm going to close out. Psalm 91 and 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wing shall thou trust. His truth shall be thine shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Why? Because we'll be hidden. Where? In the chariots. That's where we're going to be hidden. And with that being said, let me go to Revelation <laughs> 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. This is Revelation 22 and chapter 14. I mean, chapter 22 and verse 14, my bad. Salakia. 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. The hidden ones are going into the city. Now some that are gonna have to die. I told you there's three prophecies walking hand in hand. So what I wanted to bring out today was how to be hidden. Now I'm not like I said this is the most highest choice. Remember that. He has no respect of persons. He has a favorite and he has one that he likes the least. So, it's in your spirit. You know where you're at. 
You know what you're doing. I don't know. I, I honestly don't care because that has nothing to do with me. I'm only here to bring out the scriptures. And with that being said, if you've got eyes to see and ears to hear, I can only pray to the most high willing, most high willing that you were able to get something out of this message to help you in your walk. And, um, Shalom Ahamah Baraka, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, Baha Shem Kadash. Double honors to all the elders, the prophets, the apostles, and the disciples. And you know what? Double honors to all the elders of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth. Shalom.